The particle simulator in HitFilm is my personal favorite effect. I've used it to create a variety of visual effect shots over the years, and the versatility of it is one of the big reasons I keep coming back. Today, I'll be giving you five of my top tips for better particle simulations. This is not an overview of the entire effect, so you should have a basic understanding of how everything works before you watch this. I'm Javert Valbar for EnscapeDigital.com. Let's get started. Tip number five is think big. And what I mean by this is don't be afraid to raise that particles per second slider. Unless your simulation is completely blocking the view of your footage, more particles can a lot of times mean more realism. Take a look at real life examples like smoke or fire embers or even snow. There are a lot of particles happening all around us all of the time, and your VFX should reflect that. Also keep an eye out the next time you watch a movie and there's a CGI explosion or any sort of particle simulation. If your computer slows down because of this, there are a few things you can do. You can try turning off motion blur, or you can set the viewer to half or quarter resolution. If that doesn't work, once you get the simulation looking close to what you like, you can make it a composite shot and render a proxy. Tip number four is real life scale. It's important to remember that one of the goals of visual effects is to emulate real life, and this is called verisimilitude. One problem I see frequently, and I did myself early on, was making something like sparks too big or clouds too small. Here's an effect I did almost three years ago. You'll notice that the orange embers floating around the cloud are really large in comparison to the rest of the scene, almost the size of a car. Embers are tiny objects, and they come in the hundreds when they appear. So, to be realistic, they should barely be visible. On the other hand, you don't want your smokestack to be made up of a bunch of little textures, because it just won't look right. Play around with the particles per second and the scale property for each different texture you use. Number three, learn the lifetime panel. This panel allows you to keyframe attributes of the particles over their lifetime, which can result in more dynamic looking effects. Real life smoke, for example, starts small and grows larger the further up it gets. It can also change color from orange to black if it's from a fire. To do this, click the particle system you want to adjust, then go to the lifetime panel. If you don't see it, go to view, panels, lifetime to make it appear. In this list, you can see all of the attributes that can be adjusted and keyframed. So I'll come down to scale, select it, and click this button, which will create two points at the beginning and end. You can create a point at any spot in the line if you want. I'll click on the point at birth and set the scale to 60, then set the end to 200, which means over the course of the particle's life, it will grow from 60% size to 200, of whatever scale I set in the movement dropdown. Changing the color is similar. I'll come up here and select that property. What we have here are three types, off, gradient, and random. Let's select gradient and make the fire orange at the beginning. Now I'll click to add a point and change it to gray in the middle. And finally, I'll make it black at the end. You can adjust these sliders to offset the timing of the color if you wish. Another lifetime property I turn on for pretty much every single simulation I do is the alpha. If we come over here and set the type to gradient, and then put a black point at the beginning and end, your particles will fade in and out instead of popping into existence. This is one very quick and simple step that a lot of people miss. Tip number two is use multiple emitters. Don't limit yourself to just one simulation or particle system. Having several can increase variation in your overall effect, and it allows you to have different shapes, trajectories, and textures for different kinds of particles. And that's what compositing is all about blending several layers together so that they look like one. My Doctor Who regeneration short had one particle simulator with seven emitters and two or three particle systems per emitter. This allowed me to greatly customize the look of the overall energy. Going back to the mushroom cloud effect, you can see that I used five emitters to get the distinct shape of the explosion. Try mixing and matching different systems to customize the look you're going for. And tip number one has to do with the variation controls and adding effects. 
You'll notice two arrows in the control panel for appearance and movement variation. You should be using these, because they'll greatly increase the organic feeling of your simulation. Texture angle prevents all of the particles from being at the exact same rotation, and texture angle per second adds spin. Color introduces different hues into your particles, and will only work if you haven't created color keyframes in the lifetime panel. So it's not doing anything now. I'll go into the lifetime and set the color to off. Now you can see it'll affect the hues. And it's the same thing for alpha, which is the transparency of the particles. The movement variation dropdown has more controls for changing the look and behavior. This is where you can change the life, scale, speed, and other attributes to avoid uniformity in your simulation. So to further increase variation in your particles, remember that you have over 500 effects at your disposal. Not all of these can be applied to particle simulations, but there are a fair amount of effects that can drastically change the look. As an example, I quickly put together this sort of water hose of particles. I'll add the caustics effect onto the layer, then turn on motion blur. And for a two minute water effect, this doesn't look too bad. Experiment with the built-in effects on your particle simulations, and you'll be surprised with the results. Thanks for watching. If you have any other tips that you use, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll see you all in the next tutorial.